So the obsession of uh, the postmodern society with what Baudrillard calls the simulacra produces hyper-reality. And if you think of the example of the simulacra, according to Baudrillard, it would be the Disneyland, which is not an actual place, but a conglomeration of simulations, conglomeration of several signs, which are in circulation in the domain of cinema, produced by Walt Disney motion pictures. And then you can think of the Ramoji Film City, which is not actually a city, which is not actually a place, but uh, where several films are shot. And that place is significant for us. People go there and roam around that place, and then take snaps, take pictures in, that, in those places, which are not actually significant. They are not real. They are contributors to simulated images, that is films. Yet the very place becomes significant for us. So in this way, this place blurs the distinction between reality and uh, fiction, reality and science. Uh, you can think of the reality TV shows as well, which are both real and not real. So they are scripted and yet they have the semblance of reality. We do not know how far they are scripted. We consider them to be real and yet there is a director behind it, there is a music director behind it, there are actors, there are crews who are working in the production of those TV shows which are known as reality TV shows. So all these things are actually contributing to this obsession that we have in today's world. You can think of Facebook profiles as well, uh, where uh, we project an image of ourselves and uh, we live, uh, and that image has a life of its own, which is again, both real and unreal, which is not true, which is not actual, but then it has a life of its own. People like it, people try to show their reactions, people comment upon it as they are real. So in this way, the Disneyland, Ramoji Film City, the sets in the Ramoji Film City, reality television shows, Facebook profiles and several other things. You can think of the games, uh, you can think of uh, uh, certain shows which have a life of their own like uh, the DC Universe, the Marvel Universe, you can think of the superhero movies, they have a life of their own, they have a significance of their own which is as good as a real thing. It generates emotion, it moves the minds of million fans. So all these elements are symptomatic of what Baudrilla would call the postmodern condition. Now according to Ihab Hassan, an American literary theorist who wrote the book called The Postmodern Turn and from which uh, we have named this lecture the postmodern term, turn. The postmodern turn essays in postmodern theory and culture which was published in 1987. According to Ihab Hassan as he writes in that book, the postmodern refers to new artistic sensibilities that emerged after modernism. So unlike Baudrillard, Ihab Hassan is considering the postmodern as a signifier of new artistic sensibilities which emerges after modernism. So this makes more sense for us, the students of literature. And uh, again, somewhat in a, in a similar way, Linda Hutchin, a contemporary Canadian literary critic, postmodernism primarily means an increasingly self-conscious mode of art. Again, she is referring to postmodernism as a tendency in art as an artistic movement which is parodic in nature right and uh, you have to read the poetics of postmodernism history theory and fiction to know more about it while the american marxist critic and cultural theorist frederick jameson 
connects the emergence of the postmodern with the advancement of capitalism in the late 20th century. So for Jameson, postmodernism is said to bear what he says the cultural logic of late capitalism. So postmodernism bears the cultural logic of late capitalism. Now what does he mean by late capitalism? Late capitalism as opposed to monopoly capitalism or market capitalism. First there was monopoly capitalism and then when there was free market economy there emerged the market capitalism. So capitalism is governed by the market or to a great extent market also gets governed by capitalism. There is a market which exists. Monopoly is not there. So there are multiple players involved in the market. So that phase was probably there in the 19th century. But in the 20th century, we have arrived at the era of late capitalism, more advanced stage of capitalism, uh, which, as he means, is marked by the unprecedented fusion of science, technology and industrial production that was visible in the post-war era. So by late capitalism, Jameson means the unprecedented fusion of science, technology, industrial production, several goods, the boom in the domain of information, technology and all, which was visible 1945 onwards. So as computerized control started to dominate most of the productive forces and it dominates most of the productive forces even today, the global flow of capital made inroads, still makes inroads into almost all spheres of our lives. And one can see a further decline of human agency and there is an undervaluation, undermining of human labor. So for Jameson, postmodern art fails to address this degeneration adequately. And at times, in fact, it unwittingly adds to it, according to Jameson. And because it lacks the necessary political conviction, it continuously adds to it without knowing to do so. While in the previous art forms, we have an awareness of art to be different from reality, to be higher than reality, to critique reality. Now, postmodern art has no such awareness. In fact, as it parodies things, as it uh, presents things in an ironic, playful manner, it contributes to this degeneration which is visible in all spheres. It adds to this undermining of human labor, adds to this decline of human agency, which is a key feature of postmodern art according to Frederick Jameson. So, as you see, different theorists define postmodernism or the postmodern condition in different ways. But by and large, we may agree on the conviction that postmodernism is a critical attitude as well as an artistic approach that has influenced the development of several cultural practices like literature, visual arts and theorizations upon society, art and politics that came into being from the 1950s. And if we think of the dominant features of the postmodern, we can think of parody, we can think of irony, fragmentation, playfulness, uncertainty, ambiguity, hybridity. These all play very, very important roles in postmodern discursive formations, be it literature, be it any kind of uh, form, cultural formation, cultural practice. Now, these formations are believed to depart from an important artistic and cultural movement which we know as modernism, right? the early 20th century artistic movement. So because of parody, because of tremendous amount of playfulness, because of its hybridity, it departs from modernism. So 
what are the differences, the primary differences between postmodernism and modernism? Because they are very hard to define. In fact, many people argue that there is no difference at all. In fact, postmodernism is an extension of uh, the modernist pursuits in art, which emerged in the early 19th, early 20th century, the late 19th and early 20th centuries. And as uh, things started to change radically, art also started to change accordingly. And we had postmodernism as an extension of modernism. But uh, there are certain very, very important differences which uh, we can think of when it comes to postmodernism and modernism, especially the avant-gardeism which is visible in modernism, be it the mythical method of W. B. Yeats, James Joyce and T. S. Eliot. In fact, I have a video on this mythical method. You can go to that video. There are two videos on this mythical method and the links to those videos would be on the top right corner of your screen if you have to press you have to press just the i button to get access to these videos so this mythical method of wb yeats james joyce t.s eliot or the androgynous writing of virginia wolf as wolf would say that androgyny emerges as a true writing actually when the sex is unconscious of itself so androgyny was visible in uh, Shakespeare and Coleridge, the great masters of literature. And she advocates androgynous self of the writer. Or if you can think of the surrealism or surrealist attempts of Wilfred Owen's poems, war poems for that matter, strange meeting, where the enemy soldiers meet in a surreal situation, which is uh, like hell. So, all modernist experimentations which are considered to be avant-garde you go to uh, the video of mine on the avant-garde the link again would be provided in the i button in the form of the card so if you go through that video you would get more understanding you would have more understanding of the term called the avant-garde. So all these avant-garde methods that are very important in the context of modernist art, in the, mo in the context of modernist exper experimentations, ultimately have a very strong purpose of comprehending the world, making sense of the world and changing it for the better. So even when Eliot's Wasteland, uh, the other Wasteland tries to argue that it's very difficult to make sense of the world. We can have only rhythmical grumbling. You cannot make sense of the world. They are trying to make sense of the world. Even when uh, you have Finnegan's Wake where you cannot know the proper meaning of uh, all the monologues. You read uh, Leopold Bloom's monologues in Ulysses, another novel by James Joyce. Both Finnegan's Wake and Ulysses are by James Joyce and they are very, very experimental, highly experimental works of modernism. In fact, many people argue that uh, those works of James Joyce, which came at a later part of his career, verge on postmodernism. In fact, they are postmodern works. So anyways, now, whenever they are projecting language as insufficient to make sense, even then they are trying to make sense. There is a tendency to make sense of the world. And this tendency is very serious in nature. Though James Joyce is again another problematic figure. Uh, in fact, uh, Virginia Woolf's Orlando is again another novel which is uh, often considered as postmodern. You can go backward, and if you see postmodern as a tendency or postmodernism as a tendency, a timeless tendency in work of art, you can also think of Tristram Shandy. Uh, and works like Tristram Shandy are extremely metafictional in nature. So it's not that postmodern tendencies were only visible in the later part of the 20th century. They were visible in the previous era as well. Uh, but overall, this skepticism, this uh, attitude, which is marked.